Hello and welcome to Catalyze Music Academy. My name is Zach Kerstetter. I'm an Ableton certified trainer. And today I want to talk a little bit about quick and easy vocal chopping. Uh, vocal chops are a really common staple of a lot of different styles of electronic music now. You hear it in hip hop, you hear it in house music, you hear it all over the place. It's a great way to uh, add a lot of like melodic variation into your song, as well as uh, just give it that little bit of ear candy to whatever it is you're already playing in your track. So I want to show uh, my favorite way to do vocal chops. It's really easy, really painless, and you get some pretty cool, interesting results with very little effort. Uh, before we dive into that, I do want to let you know if you are enjoying the content on the channel, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. It is all greatly appreciated. So to start off, uh, we're going to be dealing with the vocal sample. It sounds a little bit like this. So what I'm looking for in a sample like this is a lot of variation, a lot of different notes, uh, a lot of like different like short notes, long notes, different things happening in there. That way, as I chop it up, we get lots of cool things to work with. So uh, if I load this up into sampler, I just play notes, it just plays the whole thing, right? However, if I put this into slice mode right here, it's going to take the transients of this entire sample. So it's basically looking at the uh, volume, the shape of the volume, and it's going to try to slice it up for you automatically. It then assigns each one of these slices a different MIDI note. So now as I play different MIDI notes, if I start at a low MIDI note, we get all these, sample, all these slices at the beginning of the sample. If I play a really high MIDI note, it's going to be these guys over here. So uh, as of right now, these slices are very, very short. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the sensitivity control right here and start turning this down. This is going to control the sensitivity of when it starts uh, slicing. So as I turn this down, we're going to get less slices, and it's going to divide them up onto the parts of the, the sample that have louder volumes. So that way, we don't get these little tiny microscopic slices. We get things that are a little bit longer, and we can get rid of some of those really tiny ones there. So if I get down to like 70 80%, you can see now the slices are... They're a bit longer and they're a bit more of like each like vocal part of the, each part of the vocal phrase is going to be its own slice, which is fantastic. From here, if it's not quite the way you want, you can actually go in and edit these. So if you zoom in far enough, you get a little triangle up top here, which means you can manually drag around where this individual slice is going to start. You can also double click to delete slices, and you can also double click into empty space to add new slices. So you can always manually adjust them if you want to. Uh, after you've used the sensitivity control. In this situation, I might purposely add in empty ones here for reasons we'll get into in just a moment. So now that I've done that, I can just start playing this. So you start coming up with different combinations of the sound that I really like to create like an interesting melodic element or again, that kind of like ear candy kind of sound. Uh, and then from here, if we want to tweak this a little bit, uh, I'm going to toss an EQ weight on this just to get rid of some low frequencies. And I'm going to toss echo on here. It's going to give it um, the reverb turned up and just give it a little bit more delay. A little bit more of that kind of like reverbed echoey delayed sound and then a compressor just to up the volume a little bit. On top of that, I could also dive into my MIDI effects and grab something like the arpeggiator. So instead of just playing things on time uh, or playing things, you know, with my MIDI controller, uh, I can just hold down a note, and if I hold it down, it's going to repeat it. If I play two notes, it's going to alternate between them. So I can create different patterns by holding down different notes. And this is why I added in a couple empty slices here, is that if I hit Notice that this note right here, we don't really get anything. So if I hold this note and another note, I can create spaces in between my patterns. So you can use those uh, empty spaces on purpose to create different rhythms that way. We can also change the speed of our arpeggiator so we can speed this up. A lot of fun stuff we can do that. If you want to get a little bit more chaotic with it, you can change the style to be random. That way, as you hold down, say, three different notes, it's going to randomly jump between them. I 
that may be a little bit too chaotic for what you're going for. So you can use whatever pattern you want here, but a lot of fun settings you can include in your page reader. So now that we've done all that, I can just start, again, start playing different notes. Until I come up with a combination that I really like. We can also play this with, you know, a drum beat or a song to kind of like get a better feel for the rhythm. So if I launch this drum beat and I start playing stuff, bunch of notes till I find something I like. If I find something I like, I can hit the capture button. Or say I like this section right here. And I can start building my vocal chops just by again kind of experimenting, playing different notes. Once you play something cool you like, just record that, loop it, and then all of a sudden you have your vocal chops taken care of. I also think it's important to mention that if you are getting little clicking sounds, if I could play a couple of these notes, you can hear there's like a little bit of a click in there. If you're getting that clicking sound, uh, there's a fade in and fade out control right here. If you turn those up a little bit, magically, no more clicking. So if you notice clicking, if you're playing like lots of notes in quick succession, uh, these two controls will help you get rid of that. Like I said, real quick, real easy, taking any sample you want, but it does work really well with vocals, tossing it into the simpler device, putting it on slice mode, adjusting your sensitivity kind of to your own taste. And you could also change this after you've already recorded it. So if you want to get like slightly different slices, this will sound different now. different combinations that way just by changing your sensitivity after you've already recorded your MIDI notes. Uh, slap on whatever effects you want, slap on an arpeggiator. Arpeggiator is really optional here. I like it because you can make these really fast rhythms that everything's kind of like quantized so everything stays on time. Play the arpeggiator speed, play the arpeggiator style, have some fun with it. You can also add in extra steps so it'll play extra notes higher than the ones you've, you've been playing. <laughs> It's really easy. Possibilities are endless. You can kind of do whatever you want with it and come up with these kind of like happy accident, interesting vocal chops, as opposed to taking this one vocal sample and manually slicing it as an audio clip and then rearranging those samples. This does a lot of the work for you and you just have fun with it. So that's gonna be it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed watching that uh, and hopefully I'll see you again in another video. Thanks for watching.